Hello everyone, this is uh, Reza Durrani and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, uploading files from uh, Power Apps to SharePoint. Recently, the Flow Ninja, Mr. John Liu, put out a blog post around how to upload image files from Power Apps to Flow without the use of any special connectors or swagger files or blob storage or any of that stuff. So he's already put a blog post out. Uh, Chakradeep, aka Chax, also uh, presented uh, John Liu's uh, idea on the SharePoint uh, PNP call. And uh, there's a blog post that covers all of this. And uh, today I'm gonna walk through uh, implementing this in a uh, in my vlog. And uh, this is my first one, so if I make any mistakes, please excuse me. So here we go, I am in uh, Power Apps. And before I begin, uh, here's a SharePoint document library in a site called RD Demo. In this library, I created a column called the category. It's a choice column and it has three categories, general policy procedure. So the goal is to create an app where users can upload files and these files could be image files or any other type of file. And uh, using uh, the the trick that, uh, or the hack that John Liu put out, uh, I'm gonna try and uh, create this Power App to upload files into this uh, repository. So let's go, we're gonna create a uh, app. We are gonna call a, I'm gonna call this my test bed app for file upload. Create my app, I'm gonna create the app using the tablet experience in mind. Okay, so the control that will allow me uh, in Power Apps to upload a, a file is the add picture control under the media category. And when I pick this, as you can see, it's a composite control. It has the uh, button as well as the image. Uh, as you can see, the image is getting uh, the data from the uh, button. And uh, so can, let's, let's rename this first. So let's call this uh, upload file button. So we can call it this, and this one is uploaded file image. Okay, so now if I go to the uploaded file image, as you can see, the image property is, is trying to check that if there is any media that's associated with the uploaded file button, uh, it will print it out, otherwise it's gonna use the sample image. And how does this work? If I play the app, I select an image, showing right here, I can even go ahead and change the image. Now, how do I reset this? Well, I can just drop in a button to reset this thing and call this reset and on select of the button we can reset the upload file button if I play this reset it's gone okay now does this work uh, only with pictures no so what you could do and this was pointed out by Shane Young and I actually did not know this you can actually uh, change the file type here to all files and it, you can actually pick any file type now uh, I picked a PDF file obviously it doesn't uh, the, it doesn't have a image associate associated with it so it's not showing up out here but how do I know that that file is uploaded right here well I can add a label to my uh, app and what we could do is we could use the upload file button dot uh, it has a file name property so I'm gonna pick the file name property and as you can see showing me the name of the file that is currently associated with this control. If I reset, it's gone. If I click on this, I can again go back, swap over to all files. Let's say I pick a Word document. There you go, it's actually associated. So if I want to create a control that basically works for all file types, uh, can, I, uh, can I do that? Yes, th this control already does it. However, when you uh, click on the click on the button to upload a file, it will always default to the image file. So users will have to be trained that they need to switch over to all files and then pick the different file types. And uh, so that's one. Second thing is since we are doing this for all file types, I don't think the image, uh, the, the image control is required here. So I'm just going to remove this. So as you can see, that's done. Also, I want to change the text. So it says change picture. Maybe I want to call this upload file. And then the text should be, uh, the text should also be this now if I if I 
click change file, I can actually change my file. I can click any other file or I can uh, pick an image or of course I can reset. Uh, going back currently this doesn't look so intuitive so what we could do is just make this look like a button i can actually fill this with a particular color and maybe just make it look more like a clickable button for the user and there you go and just to reset it snap load file button and it's labeled that shows the loaded file so now if i play this hit upload file it's loaded a file it's the name of the file i can even change the uploaded file so all of this works. Reset, reset. Great. Now, how do I send this file from from Power Apps to SharePoint? So, uh, as as pointed out by by John Liu, so I'm not going to go through the details of what exactly uh, John Liu has has explained here. I, I can link out to the blog, but I'm just going to implement what he's what he's done and just prove it that it works not just with images, but it also works with any file type here. So what we do here is uh, I'm gonna create a, another button here and this time we're gonna call this button upload, upload, upload to SharePoint. So let's load this to SharePoint and we're gonna call this file to SharePoint and when this button is clicked, what we need to do is we need to call a Microsoft flow. So I'm gonna create a new flow and this is gonna create the flow. Now the trick here that John Liu has highlighted is we need to use the Outlook connector because it uh, it enables us to have an input coming in from Power Apps of type byte, and uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And since we are not going to use the Outlook connector in the, so what we're going to do here is add a condition uh, which never matches. So one equal to two. It's not going to happen. Uh, we're going to send an email. So I'm going to use this connector again. This is condition is not going to match so this email will not be sent because there are certain mandatory fields that you have to fill I'm just filling them out and next step what I'm going to do is is we need uh, we need to look at this piece which is the attachment content and if I click ask in power apps here and attachment name I'm going to also do ask in power apps so basically I'm asking for these two inputs to come through from power apps and now if you go to the trigger and if you do peak code here's the key the attachment content power apps can only send strings uh, to flow but the format this time is byte okay that's the difference and you only get this if you use the outlook connector so we are not we are using it purely for getting the input from power apps and we are not using it in the flow for any other reason so now we have two things we have the name of the attachment and we have the content of the attachment and now if I need to go ahead and create a file all I need to do is use the create file action in Microsoft flow for SharePoint I can then pick my site where I want to upload my file I need to pick my library which is my documents library the name of my file is already coming from Power Apps. So I'm going to pick the name of my attachment and then the content is going to be the content of the attachment. That's it. And before saving this, I'm going to call this uh, upload file to SharePoint. All right, I'm done with this. I'm going to save this. This thing's saved. If I now head back to my Power App, this one's right here. So now when we click upload to SharePoint, I'm going to call this flow. Okay, now this is asking me for two things. One is the content, second is the name of the file. How do I get the content? Very easy. We have the upload file button. We can just use the media property and this now will actually send uh, the string in byte format, which is required by the create file control, which will help us create the file. And then the name of the file, again, if I use the media uh, button, which is the upload file button, it has a property called file name, so I can directly use the file name that has been put in and that's it now if I play this app and if I upload a file let's start with an image file first and if I say upload to SharePoint this is going to go ahead and trigger my flow and if I just go back and flow here's my flow it just got triggered it succeeded the power apps uh, calls Microsoft flow obviously the condition was such that it doesn't go into the send an email option, it goes into create file and it goes ahead and creates the file in my library. And here's my image file in the library right here. 
And now just to prove it, it works for any file type. If I go back, if I change the file, this time if I say, let's pick a PDF file. And if I upload this now to SharePoint, again, if we go back to Flow, so now Flow is running. Please. There you go, it succeeded. And now if I head back to my document library, here's my PDF file successfully uploaded. So as you can see, very simple, very straightforward, and it works for, for any file type. Now, uh, what if I wanted to populate some metadata associated to my document library? Well, we could do something on those lines as well. What we could do is, uh, we can first connect to our data source and how do we do that? We add a data source, we can use my existing SharePoint connection. I connect to my site and I connect to my document library. Now you can, uh, Power Apps highlights the libraries as well. I've connected to my document library and what I can do here is I can add a drop down control and this could be choices of uh, documents dot I have a category column so all my choices will stack up out here so now we can have we can do something like this wherein the user comes in they basically get a form wherein they can upload the file they get the name of the file right here they will pick the category right uh, they can reset the form if they want to or they can upload it to SharePoint let's just rename this to save to SharePoint, right? So I'm gonna click the save or reset. I'm basically creating a form here, nothing special. I can add a few labels here. This could be a uh, file and we can add another label right here which says category. So this is nothing, I'm just creating a form. Again, is this the most beautiful form in the world? No, uh, but will it work? I hope so. So we've done this much. Now let's go back to our flow that I created and I need the category as well coming in from Power Apps to update the metadata. So how do I do that? Well, after I create the file, uh, I can use the update file properties uh, action in Flow. And it's gonna ask me for the site address, which again is my demo site. It's gonna ask me for the name of my library, which is documents, the unique ID of my file is the ID that I got after create after using the create file action. That's the dynamic content right here. So I'm gonna pick the item ID. Uh, it's asking me for the category now. So what I can do here is instead of picking a category, I can pick a custom value and I can go to Power Apps, hit see more and say ask in Power Apps. And now I'm also asking for the category value from my Power App. I'm gonna save this. And because I've made a modification to my flow when I'm asking another property from Power Apps, it's not going to automatically reflect here. So how do we get that working? We can go back to flows. Uh, what we can do is we can remove the association of that flow from the app and then re-associate it. And once you do that, you should see the updated property coming through. Now it's asking for three things, the attachment content, which would be upload, file button dot media, the attachment name, which would be upload file button dot file name. And then it's asking for the category value, which would be my drop down, drop down dot selected dot value. And that's it. Now, if I play this and let's say I pick a file, which is, let's say I pick the word document and I say, this is a policy document and I'm gonna save this. So what this is going to do now, it's gonna call my flow. Let's look at the flow being called. It's called my flow. And as you can see, it's gone ahead, created the file and then updated it with the category value policy because that's the value that I'm passing from Power Apps to flow. And if I go back to my document li library, here's my file uploaded and tagged with category. So as you can see, extremely powerful. How do I upload multiple files, maybe, from, from Power Apps to Flow using this approach? Unfortunately, uh, the Power Apps uh, trigger for Flow doesn't work with arrays. So if I, if I want to pass an array, I cannot do that. However, if there's a limit that you know that, okay, you know, I want to upload uh, five attachments. I want, the, I want to give the ability to the users to upload five attachments. Then what you could do is you can come back to this send an email connector, add another item, and guess what? 
do the same step. Ask in Power Apps. So now I have my attachment to content doing this, right? I can maybe have created three options right now where I can say Ask in Power Apps. And again, I can ask for the file names as well. File name, file name, file name. And what I could do then is uh, in, 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 my, uh, in my Power App, I can then pass multiple values from from uh, Power Apps to Flow using that same approach. I'll probably I'll probably create another vlog on that as well, how to upload multiple uh, attachments in one go. But then the the idea would be to to know what that count is. Maybe maybe stick to five or stick to three and try that out. Thank you so much. I hope this was useful. Thank you.